What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte, and we are here live at Build Studio in New York City. Uh, speaking of live, for those of you tuning in right now, I've got news for you. You can be a part of this show. Yes, this show. That's right. If you're watching from our site, just press the button that says submit a question on it, or hit us up on Twitter at Build Series NYC. We'll take a look, and if we get a good one, we'll ask it live on the air. Sound good? All right. Uh, folks, it is that time of year again. Super Bowl 52 is less than a month away, but for well over a decade now, as exciting as the biggest game of the year may be, for me, it will forever sit in the floppy-eared, scruffy-tailed shadow of the true main event, the Puppy Bowl. On Sunday, February 4th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Animal Planet, Puppy Bowl 14 will commence, as does the process of finding forever homes for 90 puppy players from 48 shelters and rescues across 26 U.S. states and territories. That's the most puppies ever from the most shelters and rescues to date. It's huge. Uh, here to talk to me about Puppy Bowl 14 are America's favorite... <laughs> Rufferee, uh, Dan Shackner, and award-winning animal advocate and television correspondent, Jill Rappaport. Uh, before we bring them out, I believe we have some footage from the field, so let's go ahead and run that clip. Let the Puppy Bowl begin. And Puppy Bowl 14 is underway. As action begins, both teams have pep in their step but no pup seems to be showing interest in the toys. Team Fluff's Lila is mic'd up and has bitten off more than she can chew. But it looks like we may be seeing some action from Team Ruff. Jennifer Porrins picks up a toy at the 30. She gets the first down and then some as she goes all the way to the end zone. That's a touchdown. That's the first touchdown of Puppy Bowl. Good job, Jay Paul. Oh, man, make some noise for Dan Schechner and Jill Rappaport, people, please. And, and keep it going for Ruby and Coconut. Yay! <laughs> uh, Dan, Jill, thank you so much for being here. Uh, congratulations on another year. Puppy Bowl 14, this is huge. So much to discuss, so much to get to, uh, and we'll get to all of it. But first, just how are you guys doing? How are the pups doing? How's everybody doing right now? You feeling all right? Yeah? We're doing great. We're with our rescues. Can't do better than this, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Dan's exhausted. Well, she's a little older. She's a little mellower, but we just love them so much. Yeah, Amazing. of great course, company. of course. Uh, well, before we get in, let's let's get to the story. I know both of these animals have uh, amazing stories uh, to sh that you guys can share with us. I'd love, uh, Dan, why don't you start by telling us a little bit yeah. about Coconut over here. Coconut here is, um, well, we remember the hurricane in Puerto Rico back in September. Uh, she was actually born around that time, uh, found on the side of the road in a box, abandoned, part of a litter, and an amazing group called the Sado Project that comes in to Puerto Rico regularly to rescue abandoned dogs uh, came and rescued a tremendous amount after the hurricane, which was even more necessary, and um, brought her up. And she is up for adoption. I happen to be fostering her at the moment. So uh, spread the word, spread the love. If you I don't know think anyone. it's going to take much spreading. Take Look much how cute time. she is, right? Time. She's about three, four months old. Terrier mix, super cool. Super chill. Amazing. She looks a little, she's vibrating. Is that an indication? <laughs> and so is Ruby. I think so is Ruby. They're yeah. just really excited to be on your they're show. They're just thrilled to be here right now. All Pretty right, much. fantastic. Well, well, we'll come back to a second. Uh, tell me about Ruby, Jill. Well, I am the proud pet parent to six rescue dogs. I got Ruby from a kill shelter in Los Angeles, and she was on day 29, one day left to go. And they said, six plus, which we're not sure what that means. She could have been seven or eight. I've had her now almost six years, so she's my super senior. And in Dog Bowl, she plays my senior wiener sidekick, Ruby, and she goes everywhere with me. I also call her my sugar doggy because she helps me sell all my rescue products. She's really amazing. But again, the message of adopting older. I mean, they have so much more life and love left to give, so it's a great way to think, and people should think about that when they go into a shelter as well. Like go we were older. just saying, it's easy for, she won't have any trouble getting adopted. No. Right? Yeah. But the older dogs often do languish in shelters and sometimes meet pretty unfortunate fates. So that's what Dog Bowl is all about. Yeah, I'm really excited to get into Dog Bowl. I want to talk about that in a second as well. Uh, before before we get deeper into it, though, yeah. for those, are, I know you guys have been, uh, Dan, this is your seventh year, I believe. And, yeah. and Jill, how long have you been? Well, this is a year is four, it? believe it or not. Telling, I tell the backstories yeah, in Puppy exactly. Bowl. Pup close and Jill's personal. Jill's are, are like a sideline correspondent. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Know? you got the or, pup close and personal segments. The roughing reporter, yeah. right? My gosh. Mm -hmm. How many puns? do you guys go through? Oh, right. There's yeah, got to be exactly. a list somewhere. There's a whiteboard just filled with <laughs> But you know what? The, the pup close and 
personal stories are so amazing because people look at a puppy like this and they think, oh, perfect, wonderful, perfect dog. They don't understand that even the perfect little puppy had a hell of a time to oh, yeah. get yeah. to the gridiron. Yeah. Oh, yeah. These stories are just unbelievable. Well, and very sad and traumatic what some of these puppies have gone through to get to Puppy Bowl and Dog Bowl, too. So this show has heart. Oh, game, yeah. fun, it's got everything. And most important, opt to adopt. How did you, uh, we'll, we'll go back and forth here, how did you each first get involved with the Puppy Bowl? How did you come to work with the Puppy Bowl? We'll start with Dan. Whatever yeah. you want, no, yeah. no. Yeah, uh, my story was, they Animal Planet knew me as a host. I'd hosted a bunch of shows yeah. for them in the past. That's kind of how I got my start. Always been a dog lover, but um, always also been into sports and had been in broadcasting for a while. And then seven years ago, they realized that the guy who had the ref job for this, you know, for this <laughs> long running program, uh, suddenly needed to be more of a spokesperson, less of just a, die, a guy who stands up on the field. Because standing on the field and directing them isn't the hard part. The hard part is spreading the word right. and promoting it and uh, you know all the connections that we're making after the fact. So uh, that's how I came on board and it's, you know, here I am ever since. Amazing, seven years later. And Jill? And I was a reporter on the Today Show and I always made a point to cover Puppy Bowl. It was my favorite story in the world to do. That's how I met Dan and I booked him on the Today Show and Nightly News and uh, you know, I was just so honored when they called me a few years back and said, how would you like to be the pup close and personal reporter? I thought it was the greatest gig in the world because again to educate people to let people know what the backstory is you know the game is just I call it a mental massage there's nothing better in the world to watch but when you hear what they went through to get here it's just incredible. Mm -hmm. well, really that's kind amazing. of the, the, the beauty of the Puppy Bowl is it is this thing that's so much fun and so positive, uh, but it also brings awareness to the reality of the situation yes. here and why we make it fun and positive and, and why why these dogs are all running around uh, having such a great time now and what led to that moment. Um, you know, we've got so many incredible things going on this year. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, you know, what you're most excited about that because there's so many new things coming to the table. Uh, we're going to get to all of them, but I want to hear your favorite first yeah I got, I got one word for you, sloth. I have a sloth assistant. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. It's <laughs> pretty amazing. I wrote down the name. It's, uh, let's see, the assistant referee Shirley the Rescue Shirley, Sloth. Yeah, Shirley the Rescue <laughs> Sloth. I, this I, is unbelievable. I, it is, uh, it gives new meaning to running out the clock because it's the slowest, it is as slow as you imagine. <laughs> Horrible assistant. I've been called Horrible. that before. What Thanks. Were, <laughs> okay, they, go on. What, what were the reactions or uh, interactions like uh, when you have a sloth on set and you have all these Painstakingly puppies? Painstakingly slow. And, yeah. And, yeah, awful. Like, you know, Shirley, would you like to review this call on the video monitor with me? And it's like <laughs> and five minutes later. 1,001, 1,002. What a great bit. We've tried out different assistants for the ref over time. We had a skunk a couple of years back. Yep, I remember. Uh, as you know, we have an entire zoo of uh, sideline animals. We have barnyard cheerleaders. And well, that's the, the thing nine. that I love about this year, too. Joku, the piano playing chicken from yep. America's Got Talent, is going to be playing the Star Spangled Banner and yeah, kicking things yeah, off. Yeah, exactly. What a get. That's a big what get. We had Keyboard Cat a couple of years back. I thought that yeah, was a big get. Oh, this man. is Billy bigger. Joel, eat your heart out. Yeah, exactly. Okay? I mean, really. <laughs> yeah, this tops it. No, we, we're, we're pulling out all the stops. It's so amazing. And Jill, I think I know what your favorite may be, but talk to me about it. Well, yeah. obviously, this is the inaugural year of First Dog year. Bowl. So, so this exciting. is like a, a dream come true to finally shine a light on our older pets. Hey, like older people, and I'm not a puppy anymore either, <laughs> older people are still very vital, have so much to offer and so much love to give, so do the older pets. So this year, we Heck are yeah. finally doing a show shining a light on the older pets. And wait till you see. We have dogs up to 16 years old, yeah. over That's 50 amazing. animals from around the country everybody got along everybody played great we have some the cutest english bulldogs you've ever seen and literally wasn't the chemistry between everybody i mean you were out oh, there yeah. on the floor with them everybody Listen, loved each other when it's adult dogs you can only put a, a smaller amount on the field at the yeah. same time <laughs> than versus puppies so we got a, our, our rosters were smaller for these yeah, teams yeah. but they were they were incredible eric great decker from the the titans is involved as in logan as is logan ryan yeah, NFL these are two players. great nfl guys who are extremely supportive of us and have partnered with us and um a lot of great people have connected with us on this because you can tell that we we can all agree that puppies are awesome. That's almost a given, right? We right. all breathe air. Puppies are awesome. But now let's shine the light on the older dogs, and that's what a lot of these people are doing, including Jill. Yeah, and you know, in the shelters, that's what's languishing in the shelters. And sadly, like Ruby, thank God I showed up when I did. But on day 29, many of them they have till day 30. And if they're an older pet, and people come in and they look the other way, and they need that cage, guess what happens? 
So really, and I tell people all the time, they are amazing. Please, if people would just not look at the digit, look at the connection, the face, and don't say, how old is that dog? Because literally, they've done studies that they live longer when they end up in the home, and they're loved, and they're cared for, the medical attention. And you may think, oh, I might not have that much time, and you would be very surprised. Yeah. They want to live, and they give you many years, and look, I mean, such enjoyment. And they're mellow. Hey, come on, as we get a little older, do you want to be running around with a puppy all day? <laughs> I, I'm a couch potato like she is. I love it. I you and Ruby yeah. look like you have some pretty chill nights. Like right <laughs> now, look at her just Chill with today. Jill, yep. Um, well, it begs the question, because you talk about how uh, how many of the, of the dogs are trying to help and, and how we're trying to shine a light on this issue. Mm -hmm. This year, in particular, Puppy Bowl, more dogs than ever before. Mm -hmm. Dog Bowl, that's even more dogs there. Yeah. What, what is the, do you know what the process is like going into to getting all these dogs to the Puppy Bowl, finding them? Is there like puppy auditions? Like, how do we? <laughs> that would be awesome. Next year. <laughs> Next year, we're doing puppy 100%, auditions. 100%, puppy combine. Exactly. Yeah. I would, um, that's, I'm glad you pointed out the numbers. We have 90 in, do in Puppy Bowl, 50. So it's 140 dogs total right. between puppies and, and adult dogs this year, which is an incredible amount. I think we're going to have 100% su success with adoption. We thing. tend yeah. to, so I'm, I'm going to just predict that we will as well. And the selection process, look, we received submissions. When we first started, it, it was, you know, we had to work a little harder. But now, 14 years later, people come to us. Shelters come to us. And then our initiative on the network side is simply to showcase as many different breeds as possible, sizes as possible, uh, colors even come into play, the black one, the white one, right? And also special needs. We've had deaf and dogs, three-legged dogs. dogs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the, two years ago, I'm so glad we, we finally started doing that. The special needs dogs are now part of our roster every single year. You also have your first, uh, I believe, international Dog, Mexico. Mango, from Mango Mexico. from Mexico, which was hit with a you know an earthquake last year too. I mean, again, we're not exploiting these natural disasters for any on any you know TV purposes. Mm -hmm. These are places that need our help. Yeah, and we're realizing again these puppies. They'll, they'll be okay getting adopted, but let's spread the love. But that's the other thing, too. It's not so much e exploiting the disaster or anything as much as uh, shining light on the fact that this is what happens. You know, yeah. these disasters occur, and, and sometimes that story gets lost a little bit in the chaos that there are so many animals that are uh, either displaced or they don't know where their family And it's a very sad thing, but there's something we can do to help. Well, right? and yes. what's so amazing, we're always so proud of the fact that all of these animals get snapped up right mm -hmm. away, but it's much bigger than that. It's so much more than just the animals you see in the show. What it does is it amplifies the message out to the world, opt to adopt, whether it be a puppy or an older dog. So adoption goes up everywhere. Because if people see one on TV and they go, oh, I want that one and that one's been taken, guess what? They're going to go to their local shelter and they said, you know what? Those older dogs look amazing. Maybe I want one that's a little bit older in my household. So it's just getting the message out and letting people know that it is the best thing you can do and the best gift you can give yourself as well as them. I, I couldn't agree more. Are there any tips, though? Uh, because I do know it's, it's tough. There's 150, we said 140 dogs. Well, when you put all together, when you put yeah. them all together, right? And then I don't know how many millions of people tuning in yeah. to see the million I, over the course of the day because we kind of repeat yeah. throughout the day and we sometimes we, we film different endings to show different MVPs, most valuable pups, uh, <laughs> or we, mature valuable we, pups. Yeah, right? it, about 10 million viewers, which is pretty incredible. We're the second most tweeted thing on Super Bowl weekend, you know, after the Super Bowl, right? So, right. yeah, so and the that's question what we're hoping for with Dog Bowl in our first absolutely. year, we want to get the same excitement and energy and viewers. Is mm -hmm. are there any tips if someone does want to adopt? a puppy from the puppy bowl? Is it get in early? Is it get in yeah. fast? Are there still puppies? You gotta suck up to Dan. No, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's actually, the, it's actually not as hard as you think. If you do know somebody, myself, or anybody. <laughs> Gotta have an in. I'm out, yeah. <laughs> no, a lot no, of people pet Dan. We take about 100 <laughs> volunteers every year for the puppy bowl yeah. because we need puppy wranglers. As I said, you know, we, we have so many dogs. We need people to literally be out in the waiting area with the dogs and help carry them from the waiting area to the stage and the stage being the field. <laughs> so if you are one of those volunteers, that's usually the first line of defense when it comes yeah. to getting them right. adopted. So if you can get in there early on, absolutely. But the other thing we say, and this is just to echo Jill's point, Go to animalplanet.com, not to just plug the website. Slash adopt. Yeah, you yeah. go there and you will get hooked up with, if not that dog, if that dog happens to be gone, guess what? They're part of a litter, most likely. Mm -hmm. So there's like three other brothers and sisters that are still waiting for adoption in the shelter. And with the older dogs, the shelters are littered with them, no pun intended. So, yeah. you know, if you see and you decide that the older dog is for you, which hopefully it will be, I guarantee you walk into your local shelter, there will be so many wonderful animals waiting. Testimony on, on older dogs, because my, we foster dogs in my house, and our first foster was an older dog, a senior, but not senior, excuse me, a five-year-old dog, which makes her middle-aged, right. <laughs> and uh, 
the best fit for, I had young kids at the time, now they're older kids, but I, and it was the perfect fit for our family. And that's what I want people to realize about older dogs is that often them being calmer, them being perhaps housebroken, yeah. used to people, makes them the right fit for a busy family. They're been, in yeah, they've been there, done that. And you know what I always say in rescue, being involved in this for so long, it's not about a home, it's about the right home. What we don't yeah. want is an animal going back into the shelter system. So it's up to us and the shelters to really make the perfect match. So if you have a newborn baby at home, you might not want to think about a puppy exactly. because you've already got a baby. That was our situation. Right? Yeah, yeah. the older dog was perfect. Yeah, and if you're a senior person, you know, a real young dog might be a little too active for you, but also, you know, maybe a middle age for a senior because sometimes senior and senior, if, you know, depending on what the situation is medically, you know, that might not be the perfect match either. But again, it's just knowing your lifestyle, knowing what's best for you. And, you know, you can fall in love with any one of them, as we all do. But really making the perfect match for how you live and what your life is all about. Sure. Uh, you know, I'm actually, I'm glad you brought up uh, the website, though, because there's a lot of fun stuff this year on yeah. uh, mm -hmm. AnimalPlanet.com slash Puppy Bowl. Right. That, th there's so many firsts. That's why I keep saying it's such a big year. There's so many incredible things. Uh, I don't think this is a first. I think it's the third or fourth year you have the VR experience, yep. or you can watch third the year of VR, yeah. Google VR. Yeah, yeah which is pretty cool. Uh, but I did notice there was a first uh, ever for the playing cards. Digital playing cards. <laughs> uh, Luke, if you have that, by the way, I, I decided to partake. Uh, I got my dog here. That's Doozer. Nice. <laughs> These are guys. You can go online and you can put your dog's picture in there. These are the coolest thing, and they're so cute and funny. Uh, and it's just one of the things. There's so much going on. That looks cool. How early do you guys start working on Puppy Bowl to Literally, get all this? You know how they see Santa Claus the day after Christmas yeah, starts yeah, planning, yeah. you know, we start building the right, toys yeah. for next Christmas. It's, as soon as Puppy Bowl's over, we have a meeting and we decide what went right, what, what we mm -hmm. could improve, and then we start planning for next. It gets busy in the summer, really busy in October when we shoot, because we do shoot, shoot it in, in October. October. Yeah, I don't right. think that's a secret anymore. They used to try to keep it a secret yeah. and try to make it seem like, no, it's live. And <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't possibly be. Right, it. right. do it live. Right, it's like, because it does take a long time for these touchdowns to happen. Yeah. It, it just does. Um, it's sometimes like watching paint dry. <laughs> it's almost like a steakout in a movie. You're sitting there eating yeah. sandwiches. Oh, we got, one, we got one, we got one. in Dog exactly. Bowl with the English bulldogs. Yeah. That was like the, very slow. The older slow. dogs were stubborn about those yeah, touchdowns. Yeah, exactly. I'll tell you right now. And you guys, how many cameras are in the, the, the stadium? At least 20. I lose count. 20? Because here's the thing. There's the standard cameras, the jibs right. and all the other and stuff. Then, on the ground. then there's cameras that are embedded in every part of the right. field. The goal posts, the and, chew toys. And the in the water bowls. In the water, water bowl cams, of course. Yes, that's my a lot of angles. So it does take a while to edit it. But it takes about um, two days to shoot the puppy bowl. Then we shoot, shoot another day for the kitten halftime show. Oh, of course. And have so have forth and so forth. Yeah. So it's about a week when it's all said and done, plus dog bowl, of course. Right, and dog bowl is very story-based as well. So as we have unbelievable moments on the field, but we also have some incredible stories where we yeah. actually go on the field and visit with people who have made it their life's mission to take care of seniors. Were, were you, Jill, were you able to go out into the field and do some of those? Yes, yes. So yeah. I, we started filming this summer. and We have a great thing, Petapalooza, so our yeah, halftime show with the event. older dogs adoption right. event and you, they came home with me and my six rescues and we were out in Colorado with a man named Wolfgang and he has over mm -hmm. 10 seniors and walks them around in buggies and has a yeah. huge following I mean our it's such a heart and soul show wow. you've got the playing but you've got these stories that will make you feel so good about taking mm -hmm. in an older pet that sounds amazing, and it's like right in my wheelhouse. I love those shows. I love those kinds of stories. Uh, the first ever Dog Bowl is Saturday, February 3rd, yep. 8 p.m. Eastern, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the Puppy Bowl is going to be on Animal Planet, of course, February 4th, 3 p.m. Eastern. It kicks off there. But right. I think before that, isn't there a, a pre-show? Like there's a, a pregame. There's a tailgating? Yeah, we started pregame. Tailgating. <laughs> I just got that. <laughs> yeah, We've got it. Tail. Tail. You guys seriously never stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, a, there's a pun for everything. You know where they hang out, right, for tailgating? In the barking lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, we got. I was going to go to Q&A, but I'm just going to end this right now. <laughs> exactly. Just, and there's a great restaurant on site called Bon Appetit. <laughs> oh, oh but I'm bum, but I'm bum, but I'm I'll stop now. That's what I do for a living. I'm sorry. Please, for the love of God, somebody ask a question. We've got uh, some microphones in the room. We're going to yeah. take our first one right over here. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, so, when you find the perfect match for an adoption, um, do you guys have any tips for getting your house or your life ready to bring the, the dog into your house? Yeah. If it's a puppy. I'll just talk from the, you yeah. talk the older. I'll talk okay. old, you and, talk young. Well, <laughs> just because that's what we're holding here. Yeah. I, I, with puppies, definitely make sure your house is ready for a puppy because it's like putting a mini tornado into your household. Um, no matter how calm they might seem, they're gonna get, they're gonna get brave and they're gonna start exploring. So, you know, create training, and then of course speak to your, connect with your local vet right away in case, you know, there's shots and spaying that needs to happen and any issues. Um, and then stay in touch with that shelter. 
wherever you adopted it from, rescue group or shelter, stay in touch with them because you might have questions about their past or want to know something about where they came from or, you know, just have general questions. They are your first line in addition to the vet of defense when it comes to if you're brand new to this, dealing with your dog. And then the other thing is to get on social because, um, you know, there's a great community of, of people that are first-time dog owners and uh, long-time dog owners who can help you out as well. Yeah, you also never know if your dog's going to be a celebrity dog because uh, <laughs> there are a ton of those that are going to be on oh, yeah. the dog bowl as well. Oh, and your dog could be one of those. You don't know. Yeah, we, we had more than ever this year. I mean, all of the big ones. <laughs> yeah, many of the Frenchie. Yeah, yeah. I wrote them down. These are incredible. Toast uh, World, Ella Bean. Chloe Cardogian. Yep. <laughs> Rufus the Pug, Hamilton the Pug. All These are real guys. Instagram stars with more yeah. followers than any of us. Than we could even fathom, yeah. and they're going to be on the dog bowl as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great tip. Jill, uh, and Jill, your tips? Well, I think for an older pet, first of all, usually in this situation, they were discarded in the twilight of their lives through no fault of their own, literally dumped. For I've heard crazy excuses from the owners didn't want to pay for antibiotics too. They were moving and thought, well, it's too much of a hassle. We'll leave the dog behind or dump them in a shelter. Just the most horrific stories that you can just cry hearing about them. So when you take in an older pet or a senior pet, you have to understand that for a good one or two months, it's really not the personality that they end up and that they, who they really are. Because when they finally get into a home, they're so shell-shocked from either being dumped or abused. They don't know who to trust and mm -hmm. how to warm up because they're afraid they could be dumped again. So you really have to understand what you bring home is not going to be the same pet that you end up having because as they come out of their shell, the true personality emerges. Yes, and she's a little bored. And, uh, and really, that's what you end up with. And they are, I'm telling you, especially when they're older and you've saved them, it, it is unbelievable. Not only do they know it, they thank you every day. I am proof of that. I have, out of my six, I have four super seniors, one middle-aged and one on to younger. But literally, they are so grateful because they know. They've smelled the euthanasia. They know what it's like to be dumped. And all of a sudden, you come in and save them in the yeah. twilight. That is something I've heard, we've, I've heard a, a million times from people that rescue senior dogs or have senior dogs is that there is a, a, a special, almost different kind of bond. There's a oh, relationship. There's an understanding uh, of what that relationship is and it's, it's a really unique and cool thing. Oh, Ruby, what's up, baby? <laughs> yeah, and like Dan and I always talk about in the shelter system, when you take one out, you're saving two lives because oh, yeah. you make room for another one. And in Ruby's case, if I didn't come that day and there wasn't room, she would be gone. Yeah. So it, it, it's so important. And I always say, if we can't get people in, we can't get the animals out. So first and foremost, go to a shelter. And then, you know, hopefully puppies are adorable, but just know they're usually the first to go and first to get adopted. Mm -hmm. Try to look past the age and really consider the personality and the situation and try to go a little older. It's really important. That was great. Uh, thank you for that wonderful question. Uh, I'm going to say we have time for, I think, one more. Uh, it's going to be right here. Hi. Um, so when it comes to uh, shooting the puppy bowl, like, were there instances where uh, sometimes the puppies don't go on cue or, like, they try to, <laughs> you know, mess things up in the stadium? Like, were there any... Uh, instances of that every time every time every year every minute what of the they day say, don't work with kids and animals kids of and course animals. right and in this case you're working with animals who are kids yeah so yeah. It, it's it's the hardest job ever in the in terms of just don't go in expecting to have any order <laughs> you, what you need to go <laughs> that's in that's what makes it great yeah absolutely there we want puppies that are not house trained i know as crazy that <laughs> as that sounds we want them to be a little wild and rambunctious and unpredictable um often great things can happen in addition to the touchdowns that can score some great events can uh we had a dog tear down my my uh, sock, because I have the, the long referee socks, <laughs> tore it all the way down, clear wardrobe malfunction from a couple of years back. And that was perfectly natural. Yeah. We didn't plan that. We've had dogs do things that we didn't think they could do, uh, kick field goals. <laughs> like, they can kick? Oh, who knew? Now we should do puppy soccer. Yeah. So there's a lot of surprises that do happen, great things like that, but it, yeah, totally unpredictable. Uh, I got to ask, because you've, uh, you've both have had some experience with the Puppy Bowl, uh, you know, is there something you've seen over time that's, uh, that's evolved? Something like you get to the end of one year and you go, okay, we know not to do that again next year, or something <laughs> that has changed. Uh, that quick thing, and then, uh, yeah. quick thing uh, Puppy Online Fantasy Game did not go so well. <laughs> 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 we, di we didn't repeat that. <laughs> but, but just because people realize I don't want to be monitoring my fantasy team yeah. <laughs> online, I want to just watch the game. Watch yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, to me, uh, it's so adorable to watch. And every year with a new batch, and they're so darn cute. Yeah. I, I don't think they can ever do anything wrong. It's like no right. matter what they do, it's cute. So it's yeah. not wrong. 
And, and that's the same with dog bowl. What did you have, the siestas you find? Them? Legal siestas. Legal siestas, because too much <laughs> Well, there's the, there's the fouls that are rooted in like real NFL fouls, like <laughs> pause interference or right. roughing the pisser, or dog collar tackle. But then there are, the, <laughs> there are the, the ones that are unique to animals, like illegal bathing, because we have a water bowl on set. Right. You know, there are things that only dogs will do. Well, you know, pancaking, wallflowering, things that, you know. So yeah, that happens a lot. But and I think they'll be so surprised. Like I said, we have dogs up to 16 years old in Dog Bowl, and yeah. literally the energy level. I mean, some were, you know, taking their siestas, but for the most part, they were vibrant and fun in place. that one fight. They played together, and it was adorable. I'm awesome. really great to watch. Very exciting to see. Yeah. I think uh, just to get a, uh, yeah. a serious point into about this, uh, the biggest change that we have seen is we're doing our part, right? And okay. If you look at the stats, the cold hard statistics yeah. from the ASPCA, right. six years ago, in 2011 was when they last really looked at this, over two million dogs and cats were euthanized every single year, yeah. on average. Now that's down to 1.5 million. That's now, it's, it's, it's a, you know, I'm not saying it's all because of us, but there is a culture shift yeah, in this country is happening. about last rescue year, animals. Three and a half yeah. million animals got placed. So, I mean, yeah. it, it's huge, you know. There used to be a time where people thought they were second-class citizens, you know, damaged goods. Yeah. Oh, a rescue dog? I mean, I've always rescued since I was a child. I've never done anything else, whether I found the animal or went to a shelter. Mm -hmm. But even not so long ago, my friends would say to me, well, they must have issues. You know, there's yeah. something wrong with them. I said, that's why they're sitting in a shelter. Your perceived notions about these animals, when it's quite honestly the opposite. Yeah. You know, they really are amazing because they've yeah. had to fight for survival. And when they're saved, it's a whole different personality. So I think we've come such a long way, we baby, have. no pun intended, yeah. to not only educating people, but letting people understand that there's nothing wrong with these rescue pets. They were put in that shelter system through no fault of their own. Yeah. And you know, if people would understand that, I'm not saying that mm -hmm. even the perfect puppy from the perfect breeder who could be in Westminster could have an issue. Have an issue. You know, Absolutely. but it, literally these animals most often were discarded. And hey, the owner could have lost their job. There could have been a death. You know, there's yeah. any well, number of reasons they could end up in a shelter yeah. system. But again, if you would just go there and see what's waiting for you, boy, yeah. I think people would be in for a huge surprise and obviously are, as shown by the statistics. Every year, for sure. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much, uh, one, for joining us and being here, two, for working on and, and giving us this amazing gift every year, this wonderful show, all the incredible work you guys have done to help move that needle the way we have, uh, and thank you to our audience for your questions and hanging out with us. One more time, make some noise for Jill and Dan, Thanks, please. Guys. Thank you. Uh, for the Puppy Bowl, Puppy Bowl 14, man, Super Bowl Sunday on Animal Planet. Don't miss it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys so Thanks, much. Guys. Thank you so great.